Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. This is the final part in the hydraulic cart hinge series. We're going to round out some details and put it all together and see it in action. Okay, let's dive in. So here's a quick review of where we are from Fusion 360. Uh, we've got the yellow and pink parts made, that's the hinge itself, and of course the handle in green and the base of the cart in blue there. And uh, so we uh, just have to make that hinge pin in the middle and uh, round off the ends and we're ready to go. So to round off the end, I made this little pin to fill in the center there, quick uh, lathe project. And that center punch there will give me a place for the dividers. And I can just go ahead and scribe the arch that we're gonna want on the end of this part. And this works fine on the rounded end parts. You can see one in the background there as well. And to actually cut that curve, I go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and do it on the grinder. And I made this little jig, and I'm just kind of demonstrating how it works here. So it allows me to hold the part up against the grinding wheel, and then rotate it in a perfect radius. And uh, because the part is actually, it's a little high above the center line of the grinder wheel, so it's not cutting very square, but uh, it was easy to finish off uh, a little bit after the uh, main radius was cut. I could just turn the part sideways and square it up. You can see how that jig works. That was a quick mill project. All right, so here are a couple of the rounded parts and uh, we can just use that jig again to do a quick test fit. And you can see how that's gonna work great. It's starting to look like a hinge. All right, and as I said, we made all of these parts twice since we need two hinges for the cart. So now we can measure the uh, length of the hinge pin roughly and transfer that onto the drill rod that's going to become our hinge pin. And then we'll cut this with the hacksaw. You don't have to bust out the porta band every time. Okay, so we're ready to assemble here after deburring that pin. And I've left the hinge pin intentionally a little bit long, and you'll see why shortly. But the pin is going to be secured in each end with Loctite 603. This is really good stuff. So I put a little bit on the inside there and the outside there so that when I push the pin in, both ends are Loctited, but no Loctite will get into the interior of the hinge there and cause it to seize up. And if the parts are all clean, the stuff will hold very, very strong, but you can also separate it with uh, some heat if you ever need to. Just get that pin roughly centered in there. There we go. Now we just need to clean up those pins to match the radius with a file. So I'm starting with a 10 inch double cut bastard file. Do the, the uh, coursework. And then I clean up the file marks with a 10 inch single cut mill file. And that mill file leaves a very nice finish. There we go. You can see how that Radius has been matched with the filing. Now the handle on the cart is going to need a little coaxing to fit our parts because there's burrs and crud and other manufacturing debris in there. So I made this quick honing tool out of uh, a, uh, some, some 80 grit sandpaper and a, a metal rod in the drill. And after that little bit of cleanup, our part fits perfectly. It's looking good. All right, here's our test, our first test fit. and. You can see it kind of works. Uh, the main thing I did not anticipate is the thickness of the top of the cart. You can see when the handle folds forward, the hinge actually has to pull out of the bottom. Uh, there isn't, uh, the, the hinge isn't tall enough to allow the handle to fold forward without pulling up. So uh, I considered various options, but this is what I decided to do. Quick transfer punch, and I'm gonna drill a hole in the bottom of these brackets. There's lots of ways I could have fixed this, including remaking the, the bottom hinge part, but I had a lot of time invested in these parts at this point, so I wanted to try and adapt them to the situation. So I drilled a hole in the cart, and now I'm drilling a matching hole in the bottom of each hinge part. So I don't know if you can see it in there, but I've got it set up vertically in the drill press. And after drilling that to depth, Now I'm tapping these guys for some bolts. 
And again, just keeping the setup the same in the drill press, I just replaced the bit with a uh, tap follower to keep these holes nice and straight. And then a little Loctite and a bolt goes up through that hole we drilled. And uh, the, t the bolt is not tightened, it's left uh, uh, with some, some room at the end of it, and the Loctite's going to hold it in place. I tighten that bolt up until it's touching the underside of the bracket because the hinge is in the folded down position currently. And you can see how those guys work now. So they keep the handle attached to the cart but allow those bottom hinge parts to slide up when the cart needs to fold forward. And here we go. You can see how it uh, functions under the pinball machine. If you've ever wondered how people move pinball machines, this is it. These things weigh between four and 600 pounds for the modern ones, so you need something like this to move it. So it still does the job there with the handle folded backwards. Those hinges are plenty strong. And my favorite part, the handle holds flat forwards and slides right under the workbench. So I gained all that square footage back in my shop. And of course when I need it, it's easy to pull it out and lift it up and the handle locks vertical and I can use it to move stuff around. Well, that's it for this project. I hope you enjoyed watching me solve this little problem with my hydraulic cart, and we will see you next time.